Today's lesson, lesson six, is all about the fundamental theorem of algebra. The fundamental theorem of algebra basically says whenever we have a polynomial of degree one or greater, that when you set the equation equal to zero, you're going to have at least one complex root. In the three pictures we have here of our quadratics, polynomials, you see in the first one, x squared minus 4, we have two real zeros. In the middle example, x squared minus 2x plus 1, we have one real zero, multiplicity 2, because it's touching the x-axis. And in the right example, there are no real zeros. These zeros would be imaginary because the graph does not touch or cross the x-axis. I've listed once again um, how to use the fundamental theorem. We've been applying that rule since the last lesson. So for example one, I want to use the steps by writing the polynomial, for example one, in standard form. We can subtract 13x squared and add 10x to set the equation equal to zero. But I can't find a list of possible rational roots until I get rid of this x with the 10. So we're going to factor out an x from each of the terms, reducing that fourth degree polynomial to a cubic polynomial. And then that will leave us with a constant term of 10. So then we can go back to step two and make an organized list of the possible rational roots. That would be 1, 2, 5, and 10. So those are my possible or potential values we can divide using synthetic division. So first we'll try dividing by positive 1. So we're looking only at this cubic. So 1x cubed, 2x squared, negative 13x plus 10. And using synthetic division, 3 times 1, and we found 1, 0. And then the next thing we can do is take that depressed polynomial, x squared plus 3x minus 10, set that equal to 0. Factors of 10 that add up to positive 3, would be 5 times negative 2 to get the negative 10. And then the zeros from those factors will be negative 5 and positive 2. So to answer the roots for the equation would be negative 5, positive 2, positive 1, and then our zero. So it's a fourth degree polynomial. We found four real zeros. For example, two, they're asking what are all the real zeros of the function, and we can apply the fundamental theorem by first making our organized list of potential factors, factors of negative six divided by factors of two, so positive and negative one, two, three, and six, and then we're dividing each one of those by two. So positive and negative one half and positive and negative three halves. So we have this organized list and I'm gonna try negative one. Notice that we're needing a placeholder after x cubed and x, we're gonna need a placeholder there. So the fourth power, the third power, there's no second power the linear term, and then the constant. So using synthetic division, we're going to find we have 1, 0 at negative 1. And then we can do the same thing again. This time I'm going to use 2 with the depressed polynomial, 2, negative 5, 5, and 6. 
And actually here, let's save ourselves a little space. So I'm gonna erase this. And we're gonna use this answer, this depressed line here. We're gonna divide by two and bring down and then two times two, negative five plus four, two times negative one, five minus two, and we have depressed the polynomial again. So we started out with the fourth degree power, started out with the fourth power. This line here is a cubic. We found a zero at negative one, a zero at two, and now we have this quadratic here. So we want to try to either factor or use the quadratic formula. So in this case, I've got 2x squared minus x plus 3. There are no factors of 6 that add up to negative 1. So I want to go to the quadratic formula. And when we use the quadratic formula, the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. So b squared is 1 minus 4 times a times c. That's negative 23 under the radical. And then we're dividing by 2 times a. So 2 times 2 is 4. And our other two roots are going to be imaginary roots because the square root of negative 1 is i and square root of 23 all divided by 4. So we need to look for four roots in the quartic polynomial. They are negative 1, positive 2, and then 1 plus i radical 23 over 4 and 1 minus i radical 23 over 4. So we have four solutions. Two of them are real. Two of them are complex. Example 3, find the, all the zeros of the function by factoring completely. And we want to factor into a product of linear factors. So all of our factors must be power 1. So I'm going to look at this as factoring by grouping two at a time and take an x cubed out of the first two terms. We'll have x cubed times the quantity x minus 2. And then for this to work, I also need to have another x minus 2 for distributive property. So in the second two terms, we'd have to take out a negative x, negative 1 and an x. So we have x cubed minus x and then x minus 2 for our two factors. Now in the first binomial, I can take another x out and get x squared minus 1. And remember, they're asking for linear factors here, so we want to factor the difference of two squares as x plus 1 times x minus 1. And now I have, this is my product of linear factors, this entire line. This is my product of linear factors. So we've met that condition for the example. And then solving each one of those linear factors to find all of our zeros or the roots. Those zeros would be at zero, at negative one, positive one, and positive two based on our product of linear factors there. Example 4 tells us without using a calculator to find all of the roots of the equation. So first thing we want to do is make our p over q list factors of 12 divided by factors of 1. So the factors of 12 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. 
then I want to divide by one of those factors. So I'm trying with the negative one here. And we have descending powers of x, so no placeholders necessary. And using synthetic division, we're going to get 1, 0 at negative 1. And then we want to try dividing by, I don't know, I see a bunch of 3s and 4s and 12s. So let's try a negative 3. 1, 3, 4, 12. Let's see if that works. So 0, 4. Yeah, so we have two zeros. Our depressed polynomial here and our answer is x squared plus 4. So solving x squared plus 4 is going to give us two imaginary roots at 2i and negative 2i. So the roots or the zeros of this polynomial will be negative 3, negative 1, negative 2i, and positive 2i. So we have a fourth degree polynomial and we have four zeros. Two of them rational and real, two of them imaginary. Example five, they're going to have us revisit Descartes' rule of signs again and state the number of complex roots, the possible number of real roots, and the possible rational roots. So first of all, we know that the complex roots will be uh, the number of the highest agreed term, so that's x to the fourth. So complex roots... There's four possible. Then to say the possible number of real roots, so the possible reals would be um, let's see, there's either four real roots or subtract two from that, two real roots, subtract two from that, or no real roots. And then the possible, the P over Q list, the possible rationals would be factors of 10. So 1, 2, 5, and 10. And our Q number is 1, so that's the total list of possible roots. And then to find all the roots, we want to divide by one of the numbers in our P over Q list. 1, negative 1 negative 7, 5, and 10. And I have to confess that it, just to save time, I've already tried positive 1. It didn't work. So if you're wondering how I knew to go on to negative 1, it's because I've already practiced a little bit <laughs> and found what didn't work. So we found 1 at negative 1. And then if I take this depressed polynomial and try, let's divide by 2 in our list. Bring down the 1. 2 times 1, negative 5. Negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. And we have another depressed polynomial. That's x squared minus 5. So out of that, x squared minus 5 our zeros are plus and minus square root of 5. And then to give the answer for all of the roots, we have roots at negative 1, positive 2, negative radical 5, positive radical 5. And then I just want to analyze what we just discovered. So I'm going to call that the analysis. We ended up with four roots. All of them were real. They're all real numbers. But two of them were rational. That's negative 1 and positive 2. And two of them are irrational. Those are our square root of 5 and negative square root of 5. So number 6 would be a good one for you to turn off the video and try to 
follow the procedure on your own. Then come back to check that you have mastered this concept. My P over Q list was plus and minus one, two, four, eight, and one half. I use synthetic division with negative two in two, negative three, negative 18, negative eight, and found that this was one of our zeros. And then we had the depressed polynomial 2x squared minus 7x minus 4. That factored as 2x plus 1 times x minus 4. So 2x plus 1 is 0 when x is negative 1 half. And x minus 4 is 0 when x is positive 4. So we have 1, 2, 3 zeros. It's a cubic polynomial. So our rational roots are negative 2, negative 1 half, and positive 4. Hopefully you mastered that all by yourself. That brings us to the end of chapter si of lesson six and chapter five. I'll see you next time for the next lesson.